back to Life in the Vine Ministries, Columbus, Ohio. My name is Gianna Stewart, and we are so glad to have you back with us again today. Before we begin our review of Lesson 21, please join me in a time of prayer. Avina Malkino, our Father and King, we exalt, praise, and magnify your name above every principality, power, and dominion. We declare and we proclaim that you and you alone are King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and we worship you and praise your great name. We thank you for this opportunity today to gather around your word, to uh, study your word, and to have time of fellowship with each other. In Yeshua's name we pray, amen, amen. And so welcome again. And we will begin our journey here through the remainder of our lesson that um, we are proceeding through. We're studying Second Peter, Second Peter 1, verses 3 through 11. And if this is your first time with us, we are studying through this book here. It's um, Word, Biblical Commentary, Jude, Second Peter with Richard J. Bauckham. And we're studying through this book, just walking through um, and learning at the level that we are and the level we can. So welcome. And um, we ended our lesson 21 actually with a discussion of Bauckham's commentary notes on 2 Peter 1, 3. In today's lesson, we will continue with a steady focus on his commentary notes on verse three of Second Peter. So I invite you to go to our YouTube page that you see here on the screen in order to review lesson 21 in its entirety. Today we will continue, as I said, with our study. And if you do have the book, of course, we want you to make sure you have that with you. And of course, we always wanna have our Bibles with us as we engage um, Yeshua and engage God through study and worship in his word. So with that said, let's get started. Bauckham's comments on the Greek word hein. And what I think we'll do just for a little review here, let's look at the Greek again. That way, as we move forward, um, I do encourage you, of course, to go back to the YouTube page for this lesson that we did previously, but let's just read it again, uh, 2 Peter 1, 3 in the Greek, and then we'll move forward in our lesson for today. Hois vanta hemintes thias danameos ato ta pros zoinkai usi bian de dore mines diates Epigonosos to Kalisantos Himas Idia Doxe Chai Arite. And the English translation that we're looking at is from Richard Bachman's uh, translation in his commentary uh, on Jude and Second Peter. Seeing that, I have that in parentheses, we learned in a previous lesson that he does not translate hois, um, but I'll just read it here. Seeing that his divine power has bestowed on or to us, I mean, everything necessary for a godly life through the knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and might. And in our previous lesson, we did discuss this again. Uh, we talked about the range of meaning, and we also read Bachman's um, comments or his discussion about the problematic pronouns in verse 3 of Second Peter. We read points 1 and 2 of his comments from his Word Biblical Commentary, Jude, Second Peter, and we went to uh, page, actually page 177, where we reviewed those commentary notes. We went back again to review uh, his previous points from page 173 about the connection 
of verse three with verses one and two, where we there we learn that he has he explained to us um, that the connection is more stylistic, whereas verses three through eleven in his scholarly work, verses three through eleven being the first main section of the letter. We looked also at point 2B of his points to consider on page 177. These points that he asked us to consider are based upon the um, scholarly post of the scholars he's mentioned in his commentary notes, which point the pronoun us, according to the scholars he mentioned, they suggest that the pronoun uh, in verse three points to the apostles. And so then what Bachman does is gives us some points to consider if that is the case. <clears throat> um, and then he also spoke to us about um, the change that we see here in the verse, in verse four, where uh, the change to you in verse four also requires us to think of the apostles as the answer to the prob problematic programs and pro pronouns, I'm sorry, in verse three. So what I, I'll do so that it kind of makes a little bit more sense is I will read again the point two. I'll read all of point two so that we can move into our lesson today, which we're looking at um, point three that he has mentioned. So I'm just going to read, I'm going to go back to page 177 and I'm going to read point two to you in its entirety. He states there that if verse 3a means that everything necessary for a godly life has been granted to the apostles, it is hard to see why this statement should be made. It could only be relevant if the apostles passed these things on to the readers, but it is not stated that they did. What we did after we read that statement there, that point to consider that Bachman introduced to us to help us to look at his statement and then to maybe go back to what we had learned to see if yes, this statement is irrelevant, would only be relevant if the apostles passed these things on to the readers or not. We went back and looked at what we had, some things we had learned earlier in our studies of verses one and two. So we went back in our previous lessons on our study of the audience of Second Peter, Second Peter one one. We begin that review by reviewing our previous study from Rabbi Howard Silverman's teachings. Rabbi Howard Silverman is the congregational leader at Beth Messiah Congregation, Columbus, Ohio, and he is doing a study teaching through Luke Acts. So we went back to his commentary notes and we looked at his discussion of the um, addressees or the audience in Acts 2. I highly recommend that you go back to our YouTube page to get that teaching as well as we did give you a link that you can actually go to the Beth Messiah Congregation webpage and you can follow those teachings on Luke Acts that are being taught by Rabbi Howard Silverman. We also continued our review by looking at Daniel B. Wallace's commentary notes on 2 Peter 1, 1, the addressees and the audience. We concluded our previous, uh, our review by looking at a previous review we had also done um, of what we learned about the audience of 2 Peter 1, 1 by reviewing Craig Keener's commentary notes on the geography um, of the diaspora, where he gives us a, a, a very good explanation of Bithynia and Galatia, which we found were not necessarily on the um, 
map that we looked at previously of the, the nations that were mentioned in Acts 2 and are part of the diaspora. And then we finally looked at Acts 14.27, which is just one scripture reference, which confirms the great news that truly Adonai has opened the door of pistis, faith, trust with action and fidelity to the Gentiles, the nations. And we saw in Acts 2 and forward that the good news of the gospel that had been heard by the devout Jews in Yerushalayim, Yerushalayim, I'm sorry, at Shaviot, at the outpouring of the Ruach HaKodesh in Yerushalayim in Acts 2, the promise of Yoel, Joel 2, 28 through 29, was poured out upon the nations, uh, and that the nations have, have heard the good news, and that the nations have also received the Ruach HaKodesh. We learn that the Ruach HaKodesh has been poured out upon them also, which helps us to see that yes, this is progressive from Acts 2 going forward. We learn that from Acts 8, we begin to see that the good news of the gospel was carried out by the apostles to the nations. And so we said with a conclusion, not a total, this is it, but because we're continuing to study, but based on what we've looked at from the scholars who have studied this information and have presented it to us, we said we can say at this point, yes, Adonai has opened a way for the nations to participate in a new relationship with him and it is through the same pistas that is of equal value of that of the apostles and his chosen people, Israel. We learn also from Genesis chapter 12 forward through the Tanakh, which is the Torah, the Pentateuch, the Nevim, the prophets, the Tanevim, and the scriptures and the Brit Kadashah, the Renewed Covenant, that we see the same progression all the way through. And that yes, this was passed on by the apostles to the hearers of the good news here that are being spoken of in 2 Peter, 2 Peter 1, 3 through 11. And we said a great hallelujah, being a Gentile myself, that is good news. And so we encourage you again to make sure that you go back and listen to our lessons. Please do engage uh, Rabbi Howard Silverman's teachings on Luke Acts, Beth Messiah Congregation. We did give that link to you in our previous lessons, or you can just Google Beth Messiah Congregation, Columbus, Ohio, and you can find those teachings. So with that review and from the scholarly work of those that we mentioned and looking at what Bauckham has, Bauckham has presented to us here and his scholars that he mentioned, we said that we believe, and we stated this before, that the us in is the apostles. The us here in verse three, seeing that his divine power has bestowed on us, he mean the apostles, and that the readers are also represented here, stowed on us, everything necessary for a good godly life through the knowledge of him who is called now us together, all of us who have been grafted in and the apostles, Jew and Gentile, by his own glory and might that we all who are Messiah followers, we know that the, the apostles and the readers who are the Jewish Messiah followers who have heard the good news. And then we did learn that by the time of this writing that the Gentiles had been grafted into or had heard, I should say, and were receiving Yeshua as Messiah and were hearing the good news. So we know to the Jew first and then the nations began to hear 
that this had happened via the apostles going into the nations. And we learned in Rabbi Howard's teaching in, in Acts, as we read Acts 8 and forward, we see the shift from Yerushalayim into the nations. And we did learn that by the time of the writing again, that um, the nations have been added to the ecclesia at this time. So even though it is not stated in verse three, as Bacham did mention here in his comments, we believe that yes, um, that the apostles did pass this on. We have uh, the historical evidence because we've looked at the uh, book of Acts through Rabbi Howard Silverman's teachings. We look at uh, Wallace, Daniel Wallace's teachings, and we also looked at uh, Craig Keener's teachings. And of course there are others, but that's what we've looked at so far. So we do have some um, evidence that we see that the good news of the gospel um, has been passed on to the Gentile nations. We also um, made mention and we wanted to make sure that we mentioned is in our study um, that yes, from Luke Acts, the good news of the gospel was shared and passed on to diaspora and eventually the nations did hear. I just wanted to make sure that we got that clear. I probably have said a lot, but just we want to make sure that point is clear. So we could say that Hamin in verse three, looking at the historical background and reviewing Bachman's uh, explanation of the Greek structure and form in verse one through three on page 173, which we did look at in his notes, that hey mean on us could refer to the apostles as in verse one. So in verse one, from Shimon Peter's servant and apostle of Yeshua Messiah to those who have received a faith through which the justice of our God and Savior, Yeshua Messiah is of equal value with ours. And so the Jewish Messiah, the apostles as in verse one, and the Jewish Messiah followers together with the Gentile Messiah followers who have by this time heard the good news of the gospel and have embraced Yeshua, the readers in verse two, may grace and peace be given you abundantly in the knowledge of God and of Yeshua, our Lord. Is that beautiful or not? That is absolutely beautiful. So we wanted to give you that review before we begin our lesson today. Again, so that you can get a little bit more detail uh, about what we taught, please do go back and review um, lesson our previous lesson to today. Okay, so we'll just move forward now with our lesson for today. You to our lesson today, and we will look at Bauckham's points um, for us to consider based on the reference scholars points that they had made on page 177, which we read earlier in our lessons. So today we're looking at points three and four. Point three reads, the shift from we apostles in verse one, so we have we apostles here in verse one, you see that here, to we Messiah followers, which are my words, he has we Christians, but I'm saying we Messiah followers in verse three. Now remember we said, in verse three, that it, the scholars believe that here, his divine power has bestowed to us, we apostles, the apostles here in verse one, everything necessary for a godly life through the knowledge of him who called. Now we have included us, 
or we, he makes reference, we, us, which includes the apostles and the Jewish Messiah followers who have heard the good news of the gospel. And we said in our review that it includes also at the time of this writing, the Gentiles who have embraced Yeshua and have come into the good news of the gospel of Yeshua Messiah. So now we have, as he's saying here, the shift from we apostles in verse one, and then when we get to verse three, we are including um, the Messiah followers in verse three, who everyone now is coming into them, the uh, good news of the gospel and have received the Ruach HaKodesh. And we learned that, remember when we first started out looking at verse three, when we looked at um, on us or to us, and he introduced to us that the pronouns in verse three are problematic. So that's what he's referencing here in his point three. So he goes on to say, the shift from we apostles, verse one, to we Messiah follows, verse three, he says, is easily and naturally made and frequently occurs in the Pauline letters. He says, here the transition is even more natural because of the use of our Lord in verse two. So remember in our lesson prior to this one, in verse two, it says, may grace and peace be given you. So we saw a shift from the apostles here to now we're talking you, which makes it an easy transition in verse three to include the um, Messiah followers and the, the Jewish Messiah followers and Gentiles here and is an inclusive, it's very inclusive. And so the structure of the Greek, we're looking at the English of course, makes the transitions easy. And he says that here that the transition is even more natural because of the use of our Lord, our Lord in verse two our Lord in verse two. I'm going to take a moment before we read uh, point four. And you notice he mentioned here about the Pauline letters. So I wanted to um, share with you something about the Pauline letters, which I found found very interesting and thought it would be a good place here at this point to show this to you before we read verse four. You know, I was thinking to myself that maybe someone might be with this and they may not know what the Pauline letters are uh, that he's making reference here. So we're just gonna look at a chart that kind of shows these to us. And then I want to share something with you about that chart, something that I learned from a course that I took at the Messianic Studies Institute here in Columbus, Ohio. What we want to do now, as I mentioned before, we want to look at, we notice in verse, I'm sorry, not verse, in point three of Bauckham's comments on uh, Second Peter 1, 3, and we're still looking at his points for us to consider based on the scholarly um, posted by the scholars he mentioned in his comments. And we were, we noticed that he um, said here, um, he mentioned, I'm sorry, the Pauline letters. And I just wanted to share with you um, something interesting I learned by taking a course at the Amazing Studies Institute in Columbus, Ohio, uh, this chart that you're looking here, looking at here on the screen, gives us a list of Shaul's seven letters. Uh, he mentioned the Pauline letters, and this chart is beautiful chart of uh, Shaul's seven letters, and then you see there also the I'll get my pointer. You see the 
Gospels and Acts, the Pillar Epistles, Paul's Seven Letters, and then the additional letters in Revelation. It's a really neat chart, and when I was taking this class, I was introduced, as I said, to this chart uh, from John W. Miller. Um, you see there on the screen how the Bible came to be, exploring the narrative and message. And this is a chart in that book, chart 15 on page 79 of his book. Um, in a course that I took at the Mesonic Studies Institute in Columbus, Ohio, back in 2016. Um, and I just wanted to share with you, because like I said, you, there may be someone here in the class that doesn't um, know what Shaul's um, letters are, the Pauline letters, Shaul's letters. And this chart is really great. It kind of details everything out for us. One of the things that I learned from this course um, when I was in that course, we were taught the importance of seeing the scriptures as a whole. And of course, seeing its major parts, but seeing the scriptures as a whole. We were taught to see the scriptures as earlier and later scriptures opposed to um, old and new. And that has really helped uh, in my continual learning as I've learned from the Mesonic Studies Institute that we are lifelong learners, but it has helped me to understand that it is very imperative that we see the whole of the scriptures. So just wanted to share this chart with you. Um, when I saw that Bachman mentioned the Pauline letters, this chart immediately came to my thoughts. So hopefully this will be helpful for you. You can, of course, Google John W. Miller, how the Bible came to be, and you can get the book as well. Uh, get his book and learn all about exploring the narrative and the message of the um, of the scriptures. Okay, so I just want to share, share that with you. I thought that would be kind of helpful in our learning as we continue to uh, grow in the knowledge of Yeshua HaMashiach. Um, as we grow together. Okay. Of Bachman's comments on the, uh, on Second Petro 1, 3, and we've been looking at page 177. So now what we'll do is look at point four. And we're just gonna look at the A part of four today. And then we will continue in our next lesson on 4B and move forward. So 4A, we're looking again at the um, four points that Bachman has given us in his comment, commentary notes on um, 1 Peter, 1 Peter 3, 1 Peter, 1 Peter 1, verse 3, sorry. And so now we're looking at 4A. He says here on page 177, the transition from the first to the second person in verse four. So he's looking at verse four and verse four reads, by means of which he has bestowed on us, first person plural, the very great and precious promises so that through them you, so he says, here on his point four to consider the transition from the first to the second person, you, in verse four, is understandable as a transition to the exhortations in, or exhortation in verse five. The exhortation in verse five in the English text reads, for this reason, make every effort by your, you, your faith to produce virtue by virtue. My screen here has cut me off, so let me go to verse 4 in the book. Verse 4 reads, by means of which has 
by means of which he has bestowed on us the very great and precious promises so that through them you may escape the corruption that is in the world because of sinful desire and become sharers of his divine nature. Verse five, for this very reason, make every effort by your faith to produce virtue by virtue knowledge. So what he is telling us here in, ver in uh, point four to consider is that the transition from the first person by means of which he has bestowed on earth us, first person, for the very great and precious promises so that through them you, second person, he says it is understandable as a transition to the exhortations in verse 5. Now, what we would like to do is to look at, we're going to look at verse 5 um, in our lesson today, but we will look at it in its detail as we get to verse 5. Remember, we're just in verse 3 right now, and we're looking at some notes or some considerations that Bachman ha Bauckham has asked us to consider from his comments. So what we'll do today is we will just take an overview and look at the exhortation. Sometimes you will see uh, these verse five, the things that we are seeing in verse five described as exhortations or list of virtues or an ethical list. Uh, and they're very, very, very um, essential to helping us understand the whole context from verse one all the way through actually verse 11. We remember that we learned verses three through 11, according to Bauckham and his scholarly work, that verses three through 11 are actually the main, is actually the main theme or the main text of uh, 1 Peter. And he considers that these verses are not connected two verses one and two, which we learned in other lessons, are considered by many scholars as the salutation, whereas verses three through 11 is the main um, message, begins Peter's message when we get to verses three through 11. So what we'll do today, since we're just looking at these um, points to consider, Let's just read these virtues that we have here in um, verses, actually they're in verses five through seven. So we're just gonna read them. We're not going to dig deep into them. We will study them uh, a little bit more in depth once we get to verse five. We'll look, take a closer look at them. He does teach us though, when we do look at a close, take a closer look at them, he does share with us um, that for this reason, when you look at the Greek, for this reason, kai auto to to de, in the Greek probably does refer us back to verse verse three. So in other words, he's saying when he says for this, when the writer has for this very reason make every effort, he, he Bauckham is saying in the Greek text that the it probably refers us back to verse three, seeing that his divine power has bestowed on us everything necessary for a godly life through the knowledge of him who calls us by his own glory and might, by means of which he has bestowed on us the very great and precious promises so that through them you may escape the corruption that is in the world because of sinful desire and, and become shares of his divine nature. For these reasons here in three and four, make every effort by your pistis, which is followed by action to produce these ethical, this ethical list. 
if that makes sense. And so I can see that very clearly. And so that's what he point, is pointing out so far in um, point 4A that we're looking at today in our lesson. And it's really beautiful because we can see that Adonai has given us everything necessary via the Ruach HaKodesh and the knowledge which we have received of him through our embracing Yeshua as God's promised redeemer and king of Israel and the nations and his kingship. Because of these things, our pistis or our trust and fidelity to him with corresponding action enables us to make the effort to produce these virtues because of and through via the knowledge of Yeshua as the promised Messiah. So we have, he has enabled us and equipped us with what is necessary to do these things. In other words, we do have an active part in our transformation. We know this to be truth from several scriptures uh, from the Birkat Shah, in particular Colossians 2, 6 through 12, which I think it would be good for us to maybe read from then I'm going to read it from the Net Bible. And it reads, the Net Bible translation reads, Therefore, just as you received Yeshua Messiah as Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, and firm in your faith, just as you were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. Be careful not to allow anyone to captivate you through an empty, deceitful philosophy that is according to human traditions and the elemental spirits of the world and not according to Messiah. For in him, all the fullness of deity lives in bodily form and you have been filled in him who is the head over every ruler and authority in him you also were cruci were circumcised not however with a circumcision performed by human hands but by the removal of the fleshly body that is through the circumcision done by messiah having been buried buried with him in baptism you also have been raised with him through your Pistis, faith, trust in the power of God who raised him from the dead. And then there are other scripture references that you may read on your own. For sake of time, I will not read them. In particular, we have Romans 12, 1 through 2. We have Romans 6, 12. We have Philippians 2, 5. Just to mention a few scriptures which show us that we have been given everything necessary for godly living. He has given us all things pertaining to life and godliness. And so we have, we have been equipped with the power of the rock of Kodesh. We have his word and we have, we are partakers of his divine nature. So therefore, verse five, we can, for this reason, make every effort through or via, by your pistas to produce and then the list of virtues that we will see from verses 5 through 11 when we get there. So in our next lesson, we will look at point 4b of Bachman's comments on verse 3 of 2 Peter, 2 Peter 1, 3. I hope that you have enjoyed our lesson today. Again, I do encourage you to go back to our YouTube page um, so that you can listen to the previous lessons in their entirety. And, you know, maybe you if you're just joining, you may want to go back from 17 forward, which will help you to come to the place where we are here in our lesson today. Thank you so much for being with us. I hope that this was as, as enriching to you as it has been to us here as we together have um, been able to fellowship and worship our glorious Adonai uh, through worship in his word.
of our lesson today. Again, thank you so much for joining us today. We're always so privileged and so blessed to have you with us. It means a lot to us. And uh, we encourage you to continue to um, visit our YouTube page if you would like to review our prior lessons. In our next lesson, we will continue our study in 2 Peter, 2 Peter 1, 3. And so we will continue with uh, point 4B in Bachman's uh, comments. If you would like to know more about Yeshua, his kingdom, and his kingship, we invite you to email us at lifeinthevine at earthly.net. Lifeinthevine at earthly.net. If you would like prayer or you have any questions about anything that we have shared, we would love to hear from you. And again, we invite you to join us next time together. And uh, we, we look forward to seeing you again together. Before we leave, let us uh, close in a time of prayer. Avinu Malkano, our Father and King, we praise and thank you. We thank you for this time that we had together to worship you through your word. We do lift up those to you, Adonai, who uh, are wanting to learn more about you and to embrace you, Yeshua, as the promised king of Israel, the son of David, Lord. We pray that you will continue to draw them unto yourself. Yeshua said, no man comes to Adonai except through Yeshua. And so we just pray, Lord, that you will draw those who are seeking after you unto yourself. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. Amen. We look forward to seeing you again next time. And we say to you, Shalom. And may the grace and mercies of our God and King continually be with you and your families. Amen. Amen.